We've now completed most of the theory for the teaching of technologies education, and we're moving into the more applied practical aspects where we're looking at various contexts of solutions that your students will um, develop using digital technologies and design and technology, which we'll cover in, in a couple of weeks. So the first of these is coding context. So there are a range of different types of coding that your students will engage with, or types of coding solutions. So they range from what we call unplugged through to application-based solutions, web-based solutions, game-based solutions, and AI-based solutions. And we're going to look at various tools and approaches that you can utilize with your students in developing solutions with those various coding technologies. So you should consider coding or programming languages as an ICT. They're a digital tool that we use for solving problems. Just as we might use a video camera or calculator, a programming language is another tool that we can use in our problem solving. But there are a range of different types of programming languages and they have different advantages and disadvantages depending upon how they're used and for what purposes. So, first off, there's a few videos for you to look at that look at the basic concepts that we're trying to develop through the use of these tools, these programming languages. We're not teaching programming languages. That's not the point of digital technologies. It's around teaching students various concepts that they can utilize to solve problems. Some of them you've come across already, such as sequencing, but we also have selection or decision-making or branching, and we have iteration or repeating or looping. And there's also modularity, which sort of happens a little bit at the end of um, primary school. So with these concepts, students can then apply them to solve a range of problems using these various tools, these various programming languages, robotics, other systems that we're going to be learning about over the next few weeks. Now, there are a range of different supporting materials that help students learn programming languages and coding and all the rest. Now, not all of them involve using a computer. Um, some of them are books. There's novels and non-fiction books that students can work through and explore. There are various what we call manipulables, which are little um, like cards and games and blocks that they can put into various sequences to show a sequence of coding instructions and so forth. So it doesn't all have to involve the use of computers. And we call this unplugged. So there are a range of different resources available. Essentially, they're activities that students can complete that will help them learn various concepts that they can then apply to um, coding and programming and developing solutions with technologies, with digital technologies, such as a computer or um, a micro bit that we'll be learning about, various robotic kits and so forth. So the learning of the concepts is the main focus. Now, of course, we can't just learn them completely in abstract. At some point, students need to apply these concepts using these digital tools to create solutions. So having the unplugged activities doesn't mean you don't have to teach students how to use um, a programming language, how to use computers to solve problems. But they are very often used as a foundation in preparing students with an underlying set of concepts so that it makes the transition to using them on a computer easier. 